Do you want to learn how to maintain your water softener? Do you need special books and manuals? Does your manual even talk about how to maintain? Is it important to maintain? Uh, do you need special skills, special tools? Well, I'm going to explain it all to you right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. So why would you want to maintain your water softener? Well, it's, I guess there's some obvious points. That is to, so it maintains its efficiency, so that it lasts longer, and so basically to save your, your family money. That's what it's all about. And uh, so today we're talking about uh, water softener maintenance. These are all the tips and tricks I'm going to share with you. I guess there's about 12 or 13 of them that I've learned over the 20 years or so um, that I've been in, in this industry. And uh, it, this is, these tips are great for do-it-yourselfers. They're also great for plumbers that may not deal with water softeners on an ongoing basis and uh, are just looking for to increase some of their knowledge. It's also water uh, treatment professionals like myself that maybe, again, don't deal with water softeners very often or um, uh, it's, it, they're, they're new to the industry. So uh, follow along. I'm going to be answering a lot of questions about that and I'm going to encourage you to ask some questions. And uh, when you do, they're going to flash up on the screen. Uh, just like what you're seeing right now and uh, so those are that's a chat that I put on there myself just to kind of get the ball rolling but uh, please feel free to, um, to to put some stuff in in the chats I'd love to answer your questions as we go along I am working on a delay here about 20 or 30 seconds so don't be surprised if I uh, get to your uh, your question a little bit uh, more slowly than you think I should be so, and if you're wondering why I keep looking down, that's right, I got cheat notes because I want to make sure there's a lot of detail here I want to discuss with you and I want to make sure I don't miss any points. And I got some great props here, including my friend here uh, with the Clack WS1 valve on it. But uh, we're going to be talking about uh, a lot of different brands of water softeners and, uh, and talk about how the maintenance differs between some of the different brands and, uh, and also talk about what's the same with all of them. And uh, so, so again, you're looking at uh, maintaining your investment in the water softener. So 90% of the information I'm going to be discussing here today is specifically about water softeners, but a lot of it applies to tannin filters too. Where it differs, I'll mention that. Tannin filters look like a water softener, work like a water softener, use salt like a water softener. Um, but they have a different media inside and uh, who needs a tannin filter while well, folks that have color in their water but uh, anyway let's uh, let's move on from there iron and sulfur filters are going to be somewhat some of the points are going to be the same um, and same with um, a few other filters and uh, throughout this presentation i'll be showing you um, uh, thumbnails from some of my videos as I'll be uh, uh, referencing them. So I guess one of the first things you need to do is if you don't know how a water softener works I definitely suggest you go here and uh, and check that out and uh, I can uh, I can do this too so you can see me and also see what I'm talking about here. So uh, again I encourage you to uh, definitely check out um, check out this video of mine if you don't know i'm going to put links to uh, pretty much all these videos down below in the description if there's something i've missed please put it in the comments and i'll uh, i'll put a link to uh, whatever it is uh, that you're looking for all right so let's move right along and uh, so let's let's just quickly cover the components of the water softener so as i'm talking about it uh, you know someone isn't left out so uh, we'll use my friend here as as a guide so, so this part of the water softener up here, that's, that's the valve. This part here is the, the, uh, the media tank. Uh, this one has a jacket on it, but uh, this is the media tank. And uh, this over here, let's see if I can get this into the picture here. This is the brine tank. And uh, within the brine tank, there's a, a brine well. Oh, hold that up. You can just barely see it there, the brine well here. That's inside the tank. And uh, so that's that's what we're going to be talking about. We're also going to be talking about bypass. So the bypass is this part on the back here. And uh, so we're going to be talking about that and a few other components that I'll make a little bit clearer when I get to them. All right. So once you know the components of a water softener, let's uh, move on here. Okay, so I'm going to start with the easiest tips and I'm going to go to the, the, the tips that are uh, take a little bit more work, but I'm going to cover all of them and uh, I'll give you some, uh, some, some great information as we go along. So 
one of the things um, in, in terms of doing maintenance, one of the things you really need to know is, is your water softener working or not? That's always a very important point. How do you know if it's working? Well, there's a few different ways. The best way to find out if your water softener is working is take a water sample to somebody like me, have the water tested. We don't charge for water testing. doesn't matter whose water softener you got. If you bring me a water sample or you mail me a water sample, um, then I will test the water for you for free and tell you if it's working or not. Um, there's a couple other ways of, of knowing. And one is, where's it back here? Is you can use these uh, test strips. We have them uh, for sale on our e-commerce store, and we also have them watereastore.com, and we also have them at our Midland store, waterstoremidland.com. And they're little strips you can dip in. Now, these aren't going to tell you whether your water is a hardness of 7 or 8 or 12 or 14. No, they're basically just going to tell you uh, how how hard your water is, relatively speaking. So in this particular instance, if the color ends up at this end of the scale, I'll put it a little bit closer here. Hopefully the camera picks that up. There it is. At, at this end of the scale, that tells you your water soft. Hey, your water softener is working. That's great. If it's higher on this end of the scale, that tells you that your water softener probably isn't working. So that's one way of knowing. Uh, there's a couple other ways of, of knowing. You can use a, a pure soap like this stuff here. And uh, um, that's another way that uh, you can check that out to see if that's working or not. Um, I have uh, a video that, uh, where is that video? Yeah, this guy here. So uh, this video here is, does a complete uh, complete video on, on how to test your water for hardness. But like I say, the best way is to uh, send a sample to someone like me and uh, have it tested for you and, uh, and then go from there. All right, so that's the first thing. So um, if the water softener isn't, isn't working and you find it's not working, could it be maintenance? Could it be it's worn out? Could it be, or could it be something else? So the something else is what's called a three-way bypass. And I happen to have one here. So this was recently taken from a, a water softener. This is a three-way bypass. And uh, so this was an older water softener installation when they didn't have the bypasses built right into the water softener. And uh, so they actually created one. So it's a three-way bypass. So this was the water line into the water softener. This was the water line out of the water softener. And then this is the third valve. This is why it's called the three-way bypass. So um, on, uh, when the water softener is normally working, this valve is open because the water goes in. This valve is open because the water comes out. But this valve has to be closed, okay? But unfortunately, what happens far too often is when someone's doing maintenance or someone's shutting off the water in the whole home, uh, they close all three of these valves, and then when it comes time to whatever they finish doing to um, turn the water back on, they open all three valves. So now what happens is the water goes into the water softener, the water goes back out of the water softener, but the water also takes the shortcut across here and goes through, and then all of a sudden you've got hard water. And uh, this three-way bypass is, uh, we run into so many situations where these bypasses are, have been left open, and whatever water treatment equipment it's, it's working on, um, it's not working. And, uh, and uh, so if you check, if, if your water softener isn't working, check to make sure you don't have a three-way bypass. If you do, make sure the bypass part is closed. All right. Whoops. All right. So, um, and this is uh, the video on that. I do have a video about that if you want to get some more information, but you've pretty much got it now. So, all right, moving along here. And, uh, okay, so the kind of salt you use. So, some people might think, well, that's not a maintenance item. Actually, it is. The type of salt you use is very, very important because if you use rock salt, that means the, a component of that of that um, granule of salt or whatever is salt and the component of it is something else and that something else is dirt. So what happens is the water absorbs the salt, it's used to regenerate the media inside the brine tank, but the dirt stays behind. And over the years, the dirt sinks to the bottom and you get more and more dirt in the brine tank. So definitely don't use rock salt. I always uh, recommend a salt that looks like a tablet or a pill or a lozenge or something like that. That's the best kind of salt. And, uh, and you know, if you wanna get some more information about um, water softener salt, again, I've got a great uh, video here and uh, um, a lot of great information there. And uh, believe me, the kind of salt you use definitely makes a difference. 
um, in, your, uh, in your water softener and how long it lasts, how well it works, etc. All right, let's move on here. What's the next one here? And uh, um, <laughs> does it matter how much salt you have in your brine tank? Yes, it does actually. And uh, because what happens, you have to realize these water softeners are built for a whole range of customers. They're built for customers that are on municipal water. They're built for customers that are on well water. They're built for customers where there's a household of one or two people or households of eight or 10 people. Uh, households that have very hard, hard water, might be 70 or 80 grains per gallon, and other households where the water is a softness of five or six. So the amount of salt you use is gonna make a huge difference. And the more salt you, you pound in there, the more likely you're gonna have a problem with salt bridging, salt clogging, and that kind of thing, okay? Unless, like I say, you've got a large family and the water's very hard, you turn over the water, uh, the salt quickly in there, then it doesn't matter so much. But definitely it, it does matter uh, how much salt uh, you have in your brine tank. So definitely that's something uh, you need to check. Whoops, I got the wrong one in there. Definitely that's something uh, you need to check is, uh, and again, uh, I've got a great video on that topic and I'd encourage you to uh, check that out. All right, and uh, okay, so um, can a salt clog be prevented? Okay, so what's a salt clog? So a salt clog is probably one of the most common things that goes wrong with a water softener, and that is, um, and it, it typically comes from a, can come from a couple areas, it can be from a water softener malfunction or things like that. The most common thing is the brine tank is kept too full of salt. Maybe there's a, a little old lady living in the household and her well-meaning grandson socks it full of salt because he knows that uh, grandma can't lift those bags of salt. And what happens is the salt, the, the salt at the bottom gets um, d um, diluted or it gets dissolved by the water. And then the salt above it weighs it down and compacts it more and more and more. And then it causes a salt clog. Water can't get in and out where the salt is and the water softener stops working. So how do you prevent that? You keep the salt level very low in situations where grandma's only living there by herself and she isn't using much water. So that therefore she's not using much salt. Okay. So that's uh, one of the, the, the most common ways. So, um, uh, removing a salt clog is uh, definitely, um, I've got a great video on that. In fact, it's one of most, my most popular videos. I think it's getting close to a million views, or it's, it's up to almost a million views now. And I uh, definitely want to check that out on how to remove a salt clog if you get that far. But uh, you definitely want to check out uh, how to uh, prevent a, a, a salt clog. And that's really what we're talking about here. We're talking about maintenance, right? We're talking about uh, preventing a lot of problems uh, with your water softener. All right, periodic cleaning of uh, your brine tank. So where the salt goes, it's a really good idea to clean that out. Why should you clean that out? Well, again, if you or a previous owner ever used um, rock salt in that uh, water softener, all that dirt is going to be sitting in the bottom of that brine tank and it's going to accumulate in there. And as the water softener goes through its regeneration cycle, and if you're not sure what a regeneration cycle is, uh, go back to the video that I have on how a water softener works. But when it goes through that cycle, it eventually will start sucking that dirt out and it'll clog the injector. It'll cause all kinds of problems. So definitely you want to clean that out periodically. And um, to make sure, so one of the, the best ways to do that is to run out of salt once a year. Yep, Gary the Water Guy said that. Run out of salt once a year because that will clean your brine tank right down to the bottom. And, uh, and that's a, a really good preventative uh, way of uh, getting rid of the salt. Cleaning out your brine tank is a pretty straightforward procedure. And again, I've got a, a great video that uh, talks about that. Uh, this is the thumbnail for it. You may want to check that out. Um, it, like I say, it, it's a straightforward procedure. Um, it is messy. And uh, I definitely suggest uh, when it comes time to uh, clean out your brine tank is that um, you... Uh, leave some time to do it but also make sure that the salt level is fairly low it's much easier to do it when the salt level is low than when the level is, is super high it's also much easier on a two-piece water softener like this these two here than it is on a one-piece water softener so uh, um, all right so we're starting to get some questions here so uh, let's see uh, what's going on here and uh, Okay, so we got a question here from uh, Club Tactical. How many bags should you put in the typical softener tank? Well, um, I guess I could sort of uh, 
got ahead of you here a little bit and uh, and like I say it really depends on your situation and that's why if you want to check out that uh, video that uh, I spoke about a little bit earlier it'll really explain it and you can um, tailor it to your situation again depending on how many bags of salt you go through if you go through four bags of salt a month you can fill that thing right up if you go through a bag of uh, salt every two months and you've got a huge brine tank that will, will hold four or five bags that's not the right uh, the right way to go so uh, but thank you very much for that question uh, that's great getting some others here too uh, got another one here from Roy Santiago Hey Gary, in your opinion, what would be a great maintenance product to keep the resin at optimal level? I'm getting there, Roy. I'm not quite there yet, um, but uh, we're definitely going to be talking about that. And I'm seeing ResCare as an option and quite popular. I wanted to get your thoughts. Well, I appreciate you uh, uh, wanting to get my thoughts and I appreciate you watching uh, with us uh, here today, Roy. And uh, like I said, I'm going to get to that real soon. Uh, believe me, that's uh, definitely a huge uh, maintenance um, tip is, uh, is that. So... Uh, all right, so let's uh, see what we got again. Okay, exercising your, your um, bypass valve. So first of all, what is a bypass valve? So we talked about earlier about the three-way bypass where in, years ago when water softeners didn't have a bypass built in, that um, they would have the, uh, you'd have to build this external three-way uh, three bypass. Well, pretty much every water softener these days has a bypass valve as part of the water softener installation. In fact, it definitely should. If it doesn't, there's something wrong. Anyway, I'll show you on my friend here. So if we lean him over and the focus should pick it up. Yeah, so this is the bypass valve here, okay? And these are the bypass valves, okay? And when I say exercising them, that's what I mean. I mean, so this is in bypass position and this is in service position. So um, that's, and what you need to do is you need to bypass or you need to exercise that from time to time. And uh, why do you need to do that? Good question. So here's one a little bit, uh, there's the focus. So you need to exercise that from time to time because if you don't exercise it, what happens is these things seize up. There's a reason why you have a bypass valve, a couple of really good reasons. So one is that you can, um, if you're filling a swimming pool or, or you have a new lawn put in or something like that, it's, uh, it's, you need to bypass the water softener and uh, so that uh, you're not using softened water for that because you're going to be using way more um, water than the, the water softener could produce anyway. And it just makes sense not to use up the salt in that for the lawn because it's definitely uh, it's not, uh, it's not particularly good for the lawn, but also that um, you, you don't want to be wasting and you don't need it for that. So that, that's a good reason to bypass. Uh, another good reason to bypass is, uh, like I say, filling a hot tub or a swimming pool, any of those kinds of things. This is another bypass. This is from an, I believe this is from an Auto Troll uh, water softener. So this is a brand new bypass. This has never been installed. And if I, if you look here, see there? Yeah, it, it says here bypass and it shows an arrow which way it goes. So you need to turn it this way. So this one is so stiff that I can't even move it by hand. Probably some of those young, you younger guys out there can, but I can't. So, so as you can see, I use a tool for that. Well, the problem is if no one bypasses this valve for five, 10 or 15 years, okay, when it comes time to bypass it, then it, it'll probably leak if you can even get it to bypass at all. I was at a customer's actually earlier today and uh, we were doing some uh, work on their water softener. I went to bypass it and he says, oh, I always use a hammer for that. <laughs> on a plastic bypass valve, uh, that's uh, a little bit risky using a hammer. Um, but, uh, but one of the most important reasons for having a bypass valve is if something, for, for doing some service work on your water softener, yes, of course. But uh, even more important is than that is if something goes wrong with your water softener, if for some reason it develops a leak or the, cr the, tack, the tank cracks or something like that, you can bypass that water softener so that no water passes through it, it bypasses it, and that until you get around to fixing the leak or replacing the water softener, but you've still got water in the home, and that's very important. But unless you I exercise that bypass valve, I recommend twice a year, uh, exercising that, opening it two or three times and closing it two or three times. Um, like I say, it, it will probably leak, and uh, you may even break it when you try to bypass it. So uh, definitely that's a, a good thing uh, to keep in mind. All right, and uh, so this is a, um, 
an Aquamaster or a water boss, a water softener um, bypass here, as you can see. And um, so it, it, it's a, it looks a little bit different than what you're used to seeing, right? It has a knob on, on the top and that, and right now it's pointing at uh, service and then you point it, point it in 180 degrees, we'll go into a bypass. So the Aquamaster and water boss have kind of a unique uh, bypass valve in that it's gradiated. So what that means is some customers want to have water that isn't 100% soft. So you can leave the bypass valve slightly open and that will mix some hard water with the soft water. So instead of getting a softness of zero, you'll get um, a, a softness of uh, maybe two or three or something like that. And uh, so uh, that's kind of a neat feature. Um, and the only one I've ever come across that had that was the uh, Aquamaster and the Water Boss. So uh, like I say, definitely something uh, you may want to check out. All right, condensation and electronics don't mix. So um, yeah, that's pretty obvious, right? Well, this water softener and pretty much any water softener that's worth investing in for your family, it, no, not pretty much. Every single water softener that's worth investing in for your family has an electronic valve. And, uh, but because of the configuration of plumbing and things like that, this time of year, this video, we're at the end of July here right now. And uh, right now it's quite hot and or it's quite humid, etc. And uh, these things live in a, in a warm, humid environment. And even if you have air conditioning, you may not have air conditioning in your utility room or air conditioning that works very well in your utility room. So if you've got a pipe that runs up above the water softener and, uh, and it's not insulated and you've got cold water rushing through a warm, damp environment, there's gonna be condensation and it's gonna drip. And uh, so you wanna make sure that that dripping doesn't occur on the top of here because it can get into the electronics. I mean, this faceplate just pops off and voila, there's the electronics, right? So you don't wanna have that dripping on there and uh, shorting out that circuit board and ca causing problems for you for that uh, circuit board. So, um, and it doesn't just apply to the water softener. If, if you're on well water, you got an ultraviolet disinfection system with electronics, same scenario. Um, same with, again, ultraviolet system, that stainless, whoa, that stainless steel uh, cylinder, you know, that thing sweats a lot. And, uh, and again, you don't want to mount the controller for the ultraviolet system below the stainless steel. Anyway, we're talking about water softeners here, Gary, so let's keep on topic. And uh, so again, uh, got a, a great video on, uh, whoops. There it is. A great video on um, on insulating your pipes, and uh, I, one of the under, underappreciated videos I have, uh, believe it or not. Um, you may want to check that out because, like I say, there's some great information there, and definitely save you money uh, in the long run if you don't have water dripping on your water softener. All right. So. Um, condensation and mold growth on your tanks. So. Too many times, far too many times, I see water softeners sold with just a bare fiberglass tank. And what happens over the years, the tank sweats. We just talked about that. Cold water running through a warm, damp environment is going to cause condensation. And with condensation, if there's dust in the air, pollen and stuff like that in the air, it's going to stick to it and you're going to get mold growth. I've seen some really disgusting um, water softeners or water treatment equipment that are totally covered with mold. And some of them are even in restaurants, believe it or not. And uh, it, it's, it's really disgusting. So because of that, every water softener that we sell here, um, we always supply with a neoprene jacket. And that's what this is. This has on it, this, this black jacket is a neoprene jacket. And what that does, it minimizes condensation, minimizes sweating, and uh, so you don't get that mold growth. I did a video a couple weeks ago about uh, what's in my home and, uh, and talked, showed you the equipment in my home and I actually unzipped the jacket. Oh, I did another one, that's what it was. I was changing the media, that's what it was. And I unzipped the jacket and took it off and the fiberglass tank was like brand new underneath there. And I, I would challenge anyone that has a, a fiberglass tank that's uh, more than two or three years old um, that it doesn't have some mold growth on it. So definitely a, a good thing to consider. Uh, again, I've got a pretty good video on, uh, on that that uh, talks about uh, sizing of it, etc., and checking out. And again, we have it on our e-commerce store and on our Midland store. All right, so, so next up, um, do we have any new questions? Let's check that. And... Uh, 
Great. No new questions. I'm certainly looking forward to uh, more questions from you. Uh, like I say, we recently had this question from Roy Santiago. I was happy to answer it. And uh, and actually, also, I haven't answered it yet. I'm getting to it. Getting to it, Roy. Sorry. Uh, but anyway, please feel free to, to ask your questions. I love seeing them during the live chat. It certainly adds, adds a lot to the live chat. And uh, all right. So let's see what we got here coming up next. And uh, Okay, Roy, so now we're getting to your question here, and that is cleaning the water softener uh, tannin, uh, water softener or, or um, tannin media uh, will prevent fouling. And so this is a, a really critical maintenance tip, and that is if you keep the media clean in here, the water softener will last a really long time. You know, people often ask me, how long does water softener media last? And in most cases, it lasts 20 to 25 years. Now, there are some exceptions, and then if you're in a heavy, um, chlorinated water supply, a municipal water supply where they use a lot of chlorine, um, that will definitely break down the media and in time it'll actually clog the tank inside here. It'll slow down the flow in the whole house and it'll require media replacement. Um, but other than that, the fouling is uh, the only thing that will limit the life. And again, if you're on a well water or something like that, uh, where you've got iron in the water, you've got uh, um, uh, manganese in the water, um, you know, you need to minimize uh, fouling with that. And uh, so again, so so what do you do in those situations? Well, if you're on a municipal water system, I suggest you use a product like ResCare. ResCare, right, right here. So this product here, ResCare, show you a little clear there so you can uh, check that out that's a great product I mean there's a few other different brands on the market and and they're all pretty much the same to be perfectly honest they work really well we have that available again in our store or on our e-commerce store and, uh, and and for most municipal water systems if, if you put that uh, product in once a year or something like that it'll definitely uh, maintain your water softener and maintain its performance uh, if you've got, if you're on well water and you've got iron in your water and you're mostly using the water softener to remove that iron then I suggest this product here, uh, Rust Out. Again, a great product. And again, I'll put that a little closer so you can kind of check that out. Um, so again, that's a great product. You dissolve that in water, and uh, you need to, do, to make sure you dissolve it in water. And then you pour it in either the brine well, or if you don't have a brine well, some of the older softeners don't have brine wells, then you can just pour it right on top of the salt, and, uh, and that will uh, clean it up. So, uh, so yeah, so that's uh, definitely a, a great way to maintain that. And like most of the topics we're talking about here today, I've got a great video that, uh, whoops, there it is. I've got a great video uh, here. Check out the thumbnail and uh, some great information. It shows the exact procedure on how to do it. Um, like I say, you can definitely check out that video and uh, definitely that will go a long way, especially, like I say, if, if you're on well water, um, and uh, oh I didn't talk about tannin filters so for tannin filters you don't use either of these products for tannin filters you use citric acid so we also have citric acid available this is it here comes in a little container we again we have it on our e-commerce store and um, if you have iron in your water um, using the, the the rust out is a, a great idea if, if, if you have a tannin filter, you have to use citric acid. Just spoke with a gentleman yesterday um, who was from north of here. Uh, someone else put a tannin filter in for him. Worked okay at first, and then after that, he's constantly had problems with some tannins still showing. Oh, by the way, what's tannins? Tannins is, a, is an organic that colors water. So it makes the water a weak tea color, basically. And uh, so tannin filter gets rid of that. Um, the only problem is in this customer's case, there were some problems with the programming, but he definitely needed to use uh, citric acid in there to clean that up. And, uh, and that will definitely make that uh, tannin filter last longer, but definitely improve its performance. And uh, um, very important uh, with those guys. All right, so let's move on to the next one here. So what do we got here, Gary? And uh, Disinfecting your water softener. So that's something else. So remember I mentioned earlier, I was talking about chlorine um, in the um, uh, chlorine uh, breaking down the media, and it will, okay? Chlorine is not good for water softener media. However, um, if you're on a non-chlorinated water supply, like in other words, if you're on well water, um, it's a good idea to put through two ounces of uh, chlorine through your water softener once a year. And what that does, that disinfects the media inside here. You gotta remember, if you're on a well water system and you have an ultraviolet light to make sure you've got no bacteria in, in the water for your, for your family, um, I definitely suggest 
that uh, that you do. Uh, the, sorry, if you're on a non-chlorinated water supply, um, uh, like well water, the UV light is after the water softener. So what that means is, if you've got bacteria, the bacteria is getting into the uh, the water softener. So what that means is, you have to disinfect it. Two ounces in the brine well, um, regenerate it once a year, and that'll keep that. Uh, that uh, that media in great shape if you didn't do that and if it's gotten too far then um, you need to check out this video of mine and it talks about how to disinfect that media inside there hopefully you can disinfect it because if you don't if you have bacteria growing in there literally the water coming from your water softener will smell like garbage literally and it's disgusting and uh, and often you can bring it back but not always. And uh, if you can't bring it back, then you have to replace that media, which is costly in that. But doing pr some preventative maintenance, which again is what this video is all about, is uh, a great idea to make sure you're not in that uh, system. And uh, so uh, Roy Santiago, here, let me, oops. So Roy was asking uh, about uh, how does one use the citric acid? And uh, so, um, so again, the, the video goes in the, into detail. You, you dissolve it in the water and then you pour it in the brine well, same way as, as you do the res care. And uh, I can't remember the exact dosage, but I believe it's one cup, um, one cup to a uh, half gallon of water, pour it in, regenerate the tannin filter and, uh, and, and to clean it up. And then you got to regenerate it again a second day to clean it up just to make sure you really do that deep cleaning. And it makes the world a difference. I've brought in back uh, tannin filters that were super, super rough shape and weren't working at all um, with the citric acid. And actually I've done the same with water softeners with ResCare. So uh, definitely uh, something to, to check out. Thanks again for your question there, uh, Roy. And uh, all right, so let's move on. So what's coming up next? Cleaning the injector. So um, again, on municipal water systems, you probably won't have to clean the, the injector that often, but every five years or so is a really good idea. And uh, so first of all, what's the injector and where is it? So um, let me grab, <clears throat> I've got this old valve here and you can probably see on there <laughs> the rust and other deposits on there. I use this for a number of different purposes. But for the Clack WS1, the injector is up inside here. Okay, and uh, that's where it is. So you unscrew this cap and uh, it gets inside there. I don't know if, I... look at that. And uh, so the injector's inside here. Again, this is under WS1. That's the injector right there. And uh, you can use the edge of the cap to pry that injector out. There she is, and uh, and that's the injector. See if that focuses on that. Now, you have to be careful. Uh, first of all, these injectors are not very expensive. So um, if it's super, super dirty, then normally we just throw them away and put in a new one, okay? Um, if it's not that dirty, you can clean it, and you clean it with uh, CLR or vinegar or something like that. And time is really, uh, <laughs> time really helps with that. Uh, in other words, soak it to clean it. So um, if you want to carry a spare one, that's fine. Now it's critical with the Clack WS1 and the Fleck valves and the ones from um, some of the other brands out there. Some of the names just slipped, slipped my mind. But if they're a certain color, you have to replace it with the same color. That's very important, okay, because they're sized. So you can clean them out. There's a little hole in the middle. You can clean that out with a toothpick, a pointy toothpick or something like that. But... Um, you, uh, you can't make that hole bigger. So you can't use a paper clip. You can't use a small drill or something like that because you don't want to make that hole bigger because that'll compromise how that works. And the injector is a very critical part of uh, your, your water softener because that sucks, that, that makes, creates the suction to suck the brine out of the tank. And uh, so, um, yeah, so uh, that's cool. So I'm um, getting a high here. Wendell Live Music Videos. Hey, everyone. Great to have you on watching today with us, uh, Wendell. And uh, hope you are uh, learning something about water softeners here today. That's great. And again, we encourage uh, everyone to make a comment or whatever. I appreciate, uh, I appreciate you watching and I appreciate uh, you uh, joining us here today and learning about uh, water softeners. 
And uh, so different water softeners, like I say, the injectors are located in different places. So a very common water softener is a fleck of a water softener. So this is the granddaddy of all fleck water softeners. Raise your hand out there if you've got one of these water softeners, if it looks out there. You're right, I can't see you. Anyway, um, so fleck water softeners have been around. I mean, this technology... <laughs> is literally over 50 years old. And the reason I know it's over 50 years old because these units are now being uh, knocked off in, I believe it's in Korea. And uh, so the, the 50 years has gone, so now they can knock them off legally. And, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, this was a great product in its day. It's non-proprietary, which I really think is great, but it's very, very inefficient. And uh, so it doesn't have a battery backup. There's a there's, there's whole bunch of negatives to it. But anyway, um, so all of these fleck water softeners, whoops, wrong side. All of these fleck water softeners, this is where the injectors are, director is right here. Okay, so whenever you're cleaning the injector, some models are different than others, but uh, it's always best to bypass it, put it in the regen cycle so that uh, it releases all the pressure inside and then open it up. So here there's uh, two screws that open this up. There's a cap on here, you remove the cap. There's a screen. Hmm. Can't remember. One or, I think can't tell by looking at it. I think the screen's on the bottom. You have to pull that out. And if you're on well water, it can be disgusting. It can be totally clogged with uh, iron, uh, all kinds of other stuff, and that will uh, stop it from working. So cleaning that. If you have iron, I would suggest cleaning the injector every couple of years. Municipal water, like I say, every five years is fine. Um, we do some work on a, a compound that has about 15 cottages in. Um, uh, nearby here that uh, they're all on well water etc and they all have uh, iron in their water and things like that and every five years we just replace all of the injectors they don't want to have any problems at these cottages they like when they're in season like right now during the summertime they want to just go there and relax they don't want to have any problems so we do a lot of preventative maintenance for those folks in the early spring just to make sure there'll be no calls during the summertime when they're there hard-working folks they want to have their time off and I certainly understand that all right, so um, so so th this is the flag. Auto troll is different. Auto troll has a it, it runs across the whole valve and and you unscrew the, the on the side with a special tool and uh, and, and and pry those out. Like I say, by far the easiest one to get at and to replace and to look after is the the Clack WS1. This guy over here, um, but uh, there are different ones. And I also have oh here. So Water Boss, again, this Water Boss is quite different. It's not as different as a kinetical water softener, thank you. But uh, it is, they are quite different. And uh, so this is the injector here. Can you see that? Can you focus in on that? Yes, it does. All right. So this is the injector in the Water Boss. So the Water Boss, you actually have to unscrew the whole, how, the whole cap. This is the cap. You have to unscrew that. And then you have to disassemble the front part and you actually have to remove this injector so you can try cleaning it by putting a, a toothpick like i say a pointy toothpick to pointy wooden toothpick you could insert it in this hole here to clean this out really well um, but if you if you need to remove the injector that's it you remove it and throw it out because to remove it you actually have to put a sheet metal screw or a um a drywall screw into that little hole and then use that to pull out uh, the injector and then you got to get by one of these new ones we have them available again on our e-commerce store in canada and the u.s and uh, uh, watereastore.com in the united states watereastore.ca in canada and uh, so we have those available uh, for that uh, Great, great water softeners, Water Boss, Aquamaster, very high, high efficiency water softeners. Um, not real great on super high iron content water, but um, but uh, you know for moderately moderate iron content and hard water, no problem. Great product. And uh, all right, so let's see what else is going on here. And uh, yeah, so I was talking earlier about um, about the in injectors, and uh, so this is. Um, the injector that's uh, like I say they come in different colors and uh, the clack injector so you have to make sure uh, you know this is red there's blue and uh, it, it's a different um, color is because the holes different and it's for different size tanks so you got to make sure you replace it uh, with the right one all right so do we have any new questions
Okay, so so uh, Roy's asking uh, for more information here, and he's asking about uh, res care. How often does one use it, and how much to use without having to use the feeders? I don't like the feeders. I'll tell you, I don't like them at all. They don't work very well. They um, they clog up. They stop working, or they put too much in. And uh, if you don't want to, I don't have one here. Unfortunately, it's, it's a small tank, about this big, I guess. That mounts. Hold a little bit higher. About this big, that mounts inside your uh, brine tank, and it has a wick kind of hanging from it. And the idea is the wick gets wet, and then it, the, the res care drips in slowly. I don't like it. Um, I would prefer that if you have a lot of iron in your water, that you either use, um, uh, I think, a rust out or rust care or rust something, um, salt that you can get that actually has the, the, the cleaner in it, or um, just use, like I say, a product like this. And uh, how much you use uh, really depends on how often you use it, um, depends on how much iron you have in your water. That's the problem. Same with the res care. Um, so once a year for a municipal, uh, um, or even every couple of years, uh, municipal water systems, you know, something like that. Uh, if, if, if you have uh, rust in, or iron in your water and you don't have an iron filter, you're just using your water softener to, to remove that iron, then I'd use, um, and if you're using the liquid stuff, I would use it about every two two months or every three months and uh, just make sure that it's uh, doing the job. And that, that will really help and really make it uh, last longer. So uh, again, Roy, thanks uh, for that question. And we'll go back over here and uh, go on to the next one. Okay, and uh, so yeah, if, if you, Whoops, wrong one again. Yeah, so if you're looking for some more information, uh, like I just kind of glossed over uh, changing the injector there. There's a little bit more to it than that. But again, I've got a great video that goes into super detail. Now, this the, the name of the video might throw you off on that iron and sulfur filter not working. And uh, it talks about the injector and about how to change the injector and, and how to clean it, how to replace it, how to get to it, that kind of thing. Again, it's, it's orientated around the WS1, the CLAC WS1 valve. Um, but uh, the, the video is 100% uh, compatible whether you're on uh, for a water softener, an iron filter, a sulfur filter, a tannin filter, anything that has an injector. What doesn't have an injector? A backwashable filter. So we have um, a backwashable neck sand filter, for example, for people that have a lot of sand in their water, and uh, those don't have an injector because it doesn't suck media or it doesn't suck air like uh, the iron filter or the water softener does, so or tannin filter. So uh, they don't have injectors. Um, yeah, so, uh, all right. So let's move on from there. And uh, okay, so this is, believe it or not, we're at number 13 already. And uh, this is, uh, so, um, so a couple things we need to talk about here. So make sure your water softener basic settings are correct, okay? And I see this happen way too often, especially with the newer waters. Now, the older water softeners like that Fleck 5600 Battle Axe back there, if your settings were a little bit off, it didn't matter because it was going to use a pile of salt anyway. It, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. It's going to use a pile of salt, a pile of water just to get the job done. And yeah, your water's probably going to be soft, you know, and that's kind of how they were. But the newer water softeners, especially ones like the Water Boss or the Aquamaster high efficiency water softeners, you got to make sure those settings are right to get those efficiencies. And the only way you get those settings right is by making sure that you follow the manual, what the manual says to set those settings. But you got to have the information to begin with. So again, we come back to water test. You have to have the water tested to know how much iron is in your water, how hard your water is, to do, and how much manganese you have in your water to be able to set that water softener properly. I've run into so many water softeners, and often they're big box water softeners, that someone installed five, six, seven years ago. It's not working now. Customer calls, you go in there to, to check it out, and it's set for a hardness of 25, which is the default, okay? That's how it came from the factory. Whoever put it in, they didn't test the water. And I test the water and it's actually eight or 10 or something like that. So this poor family has been lugging two, or three, two to two and a half times as much salt and pouring it through this water softener for the last five or six years because it wasn't set properly. What a waste. And uh, so that's critical. You gotta know how hard your water is. And again, 
The best way to know is have it tested by someone like me. We don't charge for that, but um, uh, you know that's that's really the best way to know. And uh, so, whoops, it's back here. Whoops, that didn't work either. And uh, yeah, this is what this is about. Just wanted to put that up there so you could see. Um, but but yeah, that's that's important. You got to have the water tested so you know how to how to set it. And uh, and again, I've got some great videos on setting up water softeners. Again, it's mostly orientated around the water softeners that we actually sell here: Clack WS1 water softeners, the Water Boss Aquamaster water softeners, etc. And uh, so again, we got some uh, great videos on those. And uh, so we'll have a peek at that here. And uh, yeah, so, so this is a one video, for example. I did a, a water softener installation series. There's a playlist on that. I'm pretty sure I've got a link in the description down below. If I don't, put it in the comments that you'd like to see that link. And uh, I'd be happy to add that uh, to this for uh, future, uh, you know, for, for folks checking out in the future. But, uh, but yeah, so that, uh, that playlist that goes right from, you know, um, planning your water softener installation to doing the plumbing, to um, programming, to putting in a service, etc. And I guess we'll add this video too in terms of maintenance because that's going to be the ongoing thing that you need to do with that. All right. So where else are we here now? And uh, okay. So I'm eager to get some of your questions. We've had a few. Uh, Roy is pretty much uh, uh, given us the lion's share of the questions. Let me just see if I've got uh, any uh, ones that I've missed. Um, no, I think I've pretty much uh, answered all of them. And uh, if any of you have any questions right now, I'd be happy to answer them. I'm eager for them. And uh, so if, if you have those coming up, um, and uh, what I can tell you is, um, if you don't have any questions, uh, just some more information about what we do here. Um, like I say, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. Um, I put out a new YouTube video every week. Typically, they go live 5 a.m. Saturday mornings. There are exceptions, though, and the exceptions are when we do a live stream. We do, try to do a live stream about uh, once a month. Obviously, that's what this is. So we try to do those Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Um, you can watch the replay anytime in the future. They're uh, definitely on YouTube and get out more information. But it's more fun to join me live here on uh, when I do them once a month, on, like I say, on a Thursday night at 7 p.m. Uh, to find out when the new ones are coming up, you can go into my uh, YouTube channel, uh, GaryTheWaterGuy.com, and uh, on there you can see in the community tab, it'll say uh, when my next one's coming up. I usually put something out uh, a few days before. And we also send, we started out this time actually, we sent out an email, um, email blast through uh, MailChimp about an hour before the we went live and uh, try to get more, more folks to watch this, uh, this live stream. So on the, on the weeks that we do a live stream, uh, I don't release a new video 5 a.m. on uh, Saturday. Um, we just promote it on the Saturday so you can watch the, the replay. And uh, I also uh, love to have your comments. I love to answer your comments, not just through the live stream, but anytime on any one of my videos. I go to great lengths to try to answer every single question that uh, comes in. I often uh, link you to products or link you to other videos and that uh, for more information for you. So uh, definitely uh, you want to check that out. And, um, and I'm always looking for suggestions uh, on videos. We're just setting up our new studio here. I don't know if you noticed it's a little bit different this time here. Uh, this used to be my office, but since I'm very seldom in the office, it just made sense to convert this to a studio. And that's what's your. Uh, that's what's uh, in the process. So over the next couple months, you'll see some changes in the background and a few other things, the lighting and a few other things, as we get more and more into it. Uh, as you see, we do our videos in 4K, and uh, and that is uh, because I, I think it makes a real big difference to see a real quality um, when I'm talking about things and when I'm discussing things and sharing them with you. And uh, talking about sharing, I really appreciate it if you share my videos, including this one. And uh, we'll see if we've got any new. Um, any new comments here? And uh, no, it doesn't look like we've gotten any new ones. So uh, like I say, unless you've got anything else, I'll be signing off here. Gary the Water Guy from the Water Store, um, Midland, Ontario. That's where we that's where we have our bricks and mortar store, but we do most of our business online. Our e-commerce store, um, 
WaterEStore.com in the United States, WaterEStore.ca in Canada. If you're looking for a product you can't find listed, just send us an email. We're happy to answer emails. Try not to call us. It's really difficult for us to work over the phone. And like I say, most of the time I'm, I'm out in the field helping customers here locally. Uh, but I am happy to answer your question. So send me an email, info at WaterEStore.com. And if you're local here in uh, in Ont cottage country in uh, north of Toronto here, you can stop by our store or, or email us at our store, info at waterstoremidland.com. Thanks for watching.